just grab your Bibles. We're not going to, to have you sit down. We're just going to go right into the Word of God. I know you might have it on your iPod, your iPhone, but I just want to warn you that there is a plan afoot to change the script. Amen. The NIV has already taken over 64,000 words out of the Bible, so it's not going to be the NIV that you know. So you need to go and buy all of the Bibles you can and keep them. And even though you're tech technology or techie savvy, but I think you need to hold on to the written text if I were you. Amen. Because you don't know what it's going to be the next time you read it. Okay. I'm going to the 16th Psalm, the 16th Psalm, and there are only 11 verses, even though the text is coming from verse 8, and the Lord just has me preaching this over and over again, and um, I'm just going to follow him. So Psalm 16, beginning at verse 1, ending at verse 11, and I'm preaching, I'm reading from the King James Version. You may have another version. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee. But to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is all my delight, their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after other God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is a portion of my inheritance, and of my cup thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also rests in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So far, the word of God for the people of God. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Amen. And the title of this, this sermon, which is centered around just verse 8. I just want to plow into verse 8. The whole psalm is too rich. But just verse 8, I just want to stay there for a minute. And I just want to ask you a question. Will you be here? And I don't mean physically. But will you be here in him, standing in him next year? That's the title of the sermon. Where will you be next year? Where will you be next month? Where will you be six months from now? Why are you asking that question? Because the Bible said in the last days there will be a great falling away. Let's not try to prophesy anything else because that's what the word says. The Bible said that men shall become lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. Men and women shall seek words to tickle their fancy, to agree with their own homespun theology. Men and women will run after things that will make them feel good, that will pump up their flesh, but anything that challenges them to surrender and to lay aside and to die or to be crucified, they don't want to hear it. But as much as there is a great falling away, there's also a great ingathering. And I named the ingathering the remnant. There's always been a remnant. I don't care throughout biblical history, throughout church history, there's always been a group of people who have stood the test of time when it comes to walking with the Lord. 
My mother is 104. She will be at the end of the month. And we're going to celebrate her birthday. And she's still standing in the Lord. Is it possible to be in this kind of generation at this season in the history of this world and be saved? Is it possible to be in and among and not be off? Is it possible to live with all of these distractions and options and seductions and still maintain a steady commitment? Is it possible not to change up, deconstruct, water down, kind of customize the gospel to suit our preferences? Is it possible to have a preference but give it up for God? Is it possible to like something but like him more? Is it possible? Is it possible to leave church and live it? Is it possible to leave this conference and go home and live what you have heard? Is it possible to make hard choices when it comes to ambition and relationship and popularity and neediness and choose Christ above it all are there people in the world who live like this or are we just a bunch of hypocrites that know when to dip when to come up when to wave when to holler want to cliche it and then walk out of here and live any kind of way we want to is it possible to come out of this and be strengthened in the Lord is it possible the world thinks that we're a bunch of hypocrites. The world, the world bets. The world put money on us that they studied us enough. They watched us. And they know that there's some things they make movie on us. And they redefine us. And we have submitted to their redefinition. You see, America is not going to get rid of Christianity because she can't but she can redefine Christianity and we can agree. But here, I love this text. I love it, I love it, I love it. I love the Psalms, I love the Psalms. I do love the whole book, but the Psalms are very powerful, especially in my devotion. I believe that spending time with God alone, alone, without the TV, without the chatter, without company is a thing that strengthens me daily daily I need that time yes I am dependent I am codependent I'm dependent on him yes I do need him every hour yes I do I need him every hour every day I need him all day long I need him at night I need him when I wake up in the morning and I don't apologize so when when when, when you spend time with the Lord and he ministers to you and he gives you what you need you're able to maintain a certain able to stand a certain way carry yourself a certain way and you're able to make choices based on that belief system so you're not easily seduced sometimes you feel yourself bending but you come right by blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly standing in the way of sinners now what sit it in the seat of the scornful don't even have lunch ah but his or her delight is in the law of the lord and in this law that you what meditate day and night you shall be like a tree planted lord have mercy by the rivers of waters who bring it forth its fruit in its season whose leaves also shall not wither you won't have a fake anointing whose leaves also shall not wither but whatsoever you do it ah shall prosper the ungodly are not so they're like the chaff that the wind driveth away come on ladies and gentlemen if you take counsel only from God you need to celebrate him right now put your hands together and praise him so behind every every literary piece 
uh, particularly the poetical books. You know, this is where Psalm belongs to that section of the Bible called the books of poetry, like Song of Solomon and Ecclesiastes and Job in Proverbs. They all represent the, 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 the poetical books. And in these literary pieces, there usually is a story behind the story. You know, the Psalms are, are written by David and Ethan and, and Asaph, the, the sons of Korah and Solomon and Moses and anonymous writers. And they lead you into devotion and piety and relationship. The, the Psalms also teach you you must worship God with your emotions. A lot of religion and denominations want you to divorce your emotions from your worship. In other words, you sit stoic in your seat and just nod your head but you can't express but when I read the Psalms it's very expressive don't you think so hear my cry See? instead of cussing you cry so if you don't cry you're gonna cuss hear my cry oh God attend unto my prayer from the end means from the pit of my belly will I cry unto you and when my heart is overwhelmed when I'm about to lose it lead me to the rock ah that is higher thou hast been a shelter for me strong tower from them demons around me all right so behind this 16th Psalm, and I'm not going to be for you long, behind the 16th Psalm, there is a story. I just went to a play, and, and I believe in going to, I believe in having a balanced life, you know, you know, plays, and I play tennis, and, you know, I laugh and whatever, you know, because that's what's wrong with the church. You know, you, you try to be so pious and whatever, and then you, you have a secret life because you can't, you know, but openly, I'm telling you, I went to a play. It's called Amazing Grace. If you're ever in New York and it's still running, go see it. It's a story of John Newton, the gentleman who wrote Amazing Grace. He was a slave master. He was a slave trader. And the Lord saved him. And he wrote the song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretched slave master like me. A wretched racist like me. I never sing that song the same again. Well, there's a story behind this 16th Psalm. What's the story behind Psalm 16? Most scholars agree, and maybe some won't, that this is a Psalm of David, even though it has a messianic touch to it. Thou shalt not leave my soul in hell. But David, we know, was anointed about 17 years old to be king, and he lived as a fugitive for a number of years, maybe 17 years, running from Saul. Why? Because Saul lost what David now has. See, I didn't understand that. When you are now walking with the Lord and someone lost that, you have become the target of their envy. Why are you surprised? Why, why you keep asking them why you don't like me? You know why they don't like you. <laughs> why, why you. Why you wonder why they don't want to be bothered with you and put your name out and what? Because could it be that the kiss of God is on your life? Could it, could it be that you carry something? Tell your neighbor, I'm carrying something, I'm carrying something. <laughs> And when you carry them like that, you become the target of envy. You don't have to do nothing but show up and everybody start clearing their throat. <laughs> All right, that's another sermon. But anyway, here we are. David now is running from Saul, a man with an anointing, now a fugitive. The contradictory aspects of walking with God. How can I be so anointed and living like a fugitive how can i be king and living in a cave how could i be called and nobody responds to me but david needed that tell your neighbor he needed it he needed it he needed the 17 years of the fugitive to whip the mess out of him he needed 17 years to bring him in line he tell your neighbor i need this i need this i need this exile 
I know y'all ain't gonna help me. I need this rejection. I need it. Because it's helping me to grow up. I need it. I need them to talk about me. Talk about me. So I can learn to trust God and not trust people. So David now, he's running, he's hiding. Saul is trying to kill him. Trying to kill him, wipe him out. So he runs now. This is a very, very sensitive area right here. Tell your neighbor, he's getting ready to get sensitive. He's getting ready to get sensitive. He runs now to the enemy for cover. He's called to be king of Israel. But he's living in the camp of the Philistines. And the Philistines, they are avid enemy of Israel. What is that? How do we explain that little confusion right there? Looking for help in the wrong places. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. You see, when the church wounds you, or so you think, when the church wounds you, because sometimes it's imaginary, when the church wounds you and you're offended, you run to the wrong camp. And you see, Akish, one of the Akish, admired David because he was such a warrior. He killed their famous giant, giant Goliath. And they are very excited about warriors and conquerors and courageous men. So they secretly admired David. And David felt safe because his own people rejected him what do you do when your own people reject you i know the people on the job they like you better your girlfriend your girlfriend who is not saved like you better the folk out in the street treat you better than the folk in the church is not what you say and you say it with the neck and you say it with your chest out ah oh, but david was hiding but the one thing that david was in the midst but not of in the midst but not you see, that's what's wrong with you. You're in the midst, but you're off. You're in the midst, but you're off. I don't care how hurt you are. Don't you give up your faith. I don't care what the devil did. I don't care if the church slammed the door in your face. Don't you compromise who your help comes from. All of your help comes from the Lord. Go home to your unsaved loved ones who hate God and talk about the church and put your head in their lap. No, 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 no. Grow up. Everything all right? Everything is fine. Anybody bother you? Not a soul. Everything going good? God is good. Oh, you don't give up that information to the devil, honey. You hold on to your testimony. Next thing you know, you're on Serenity Sunday. Don't come to church anymore. Serenity Sunday. Deep breathe and blow. Next thing you know, you're channeling. Next thing you know, you're doing all kind of crazy stuff because you've walked away. David, 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 David said, no, 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 no. I may be going through a little difficulty. I may not be able to understand and explain an anointing without a demonstration, an anointing without any, any, any execution. Uh, I'm king, but there's no throne. I'm king but there's no palace I'm king but there's no people I can't explain it but just because I can't explain it it doesn't mean that I'm not in agreement with God there's some things I'll never explain but unto the king eternal immortal invisible he's the only wise God be honor and glory be honor and glory I'm not supposed to explain it I'm just supposed to believe You see, let me apologize to you what we have done to you in the last couple of decades. We have reduced God to a candy cane giver, to a Santa Claus. So when he doesn't function and make us comfortable, because Christianity is supposed to be comfortable. And because it's not comfortable, because you're not blessed and highly favored in your mess, because you're not receiving great abundance overnight, then God has failed. But we lied to you. Uh, that's not what the Bible said. Yay, do I walk. 
Oh, there's a valley, baby. Tell your neighbor, there's a valley. Ah, through the valley, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Ah, because thou art with me. I may not have the stuff, but I have him. I rebuke the spirit of stuff. And I command you to get him, 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 him. Put your hands together. I feel a praise up in here now. Come on and glorify him. I command the theology of stuff to go out the door. Because that's what happens when you don't get the stuff. You go out the door and go somewhere else. But I may lose everything. But if I have him, I have everything. Where you gonna be next year? See, that's the question. Will you be standing? Will your testimony be stronger? Will your life be firmly rooted and grounded in him? So David now is in and he's saying, All right, I, I'm in the midst of these people. I watch them go to their worship. They worship Dagon part man part fish I watch them offer up their libations and their sacrifices but I don't go with them uh, they may have given me temporary housing but I don't pray to their God like Daniel Shadrach Meshach and Abednego teenagers these teenagers act acted better than some of you old folks they were in a strange country but they don't kiss and they don't bow and some of you all are kissers and bowers you kiss up to everybody kiss up you just Yes, yes. Somebody flatter you and you kiss her. Somebody lay hands and tell you you're going to be great and you kiss her. I don't kiss up to nobody and I don't bow to nobody but him. Ain't nobody that bad. Ain't nobody that wonderful. I may not have you as a friend but I ain't going to kiss up because he's the one that wakes me up in the morning. He's the one that calls me by my name. He's the one that kicks me as the apple of his eye. Oh, I need somebody to help me praise him if you're not a kisser and a bower. Come on. Some of you are mad right now because you're kisses and bowers. David, how did you live in the midst of these heathens? And we're in the midst of a heathen society that hates God. Oh, y'all you don't listen to the news? Please turn on the radio. Please go to the internet. Even if you don't like the news, just go and get a little information. We're living in a heathen, an anti-Christ community, an anti-Christian community, an anti-holiness church community. See, because they're going to like churches, but not churches that lift up the name of Jesus. How do you hold on to this? How did you keep it, David? And he's going to give us the way to do it. Tell your neighbor, this is it now. This is it. Because some of you are going home to difficult circumstances. Some of you are going back to people that constantly laugh and talk about you. Some of you are living with atheists and agnostic heathen people. Some of you are still are being attacked. Attacked because of your faith. Some of you go to churches where people don't even teach the Bible or open the Bible. How do you hold on to your stuff? Here it is. I have set the law always before me you can't do it just by going through a ritual you've got to keep him in your face that's the problem ladies and gentlemen we have personalities in our face we have scandal and empire in our face we've got all other people in our face but we have not set. And the word set in the Hebrew means I have positioned him so I can become like him. Jesus have mercy. I keep him there because I want what he has. I hold him there because I want him to run.
rub off on me. I want his holiness and his righteousness, and his grace, and his power. Lord, have mercy. I want his healing, everything that he has. I want him to rub off and influence my life. So I keep him right there. You get out of that space. You may stand here and you may stand there and you may stand over there but right here belongs to nobody but God oh come on here too many people up in here ah too much stuff up in here get out the way and he answered shepherd he answered to us listen I have inherited a whole lot of children. My adopted daughter just moved. She lives 15 minutes too close, 15 minutes down the road. She has three. My niece just moved 15 minutes down the road too, too close. She has three. My other niece lives with me two and one on the way. It's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. And they all must come to T.T.'s house and get in T.T.'s bed even if T.T. is asleep. They don't care nothing about no sleep. They know they're not, but they're not going to open. They don't wait for me to say Thank God T.T. has clothes on. Be a mess. But anyway, so they, they go, they're going through a little something right now because the attitude is, do you have to go again? Do you have to travel? I thought you told me you'd be home all this week. I said, take it up with the Lord, little girl. And back out of TT space right there. We'll go shopping together. I'll hug you. I'll talk to you. We'll memorize scripture. But when it comes to that there, you better learn early. Learn early that TT has a higher calling. Lord have mercy. And that's what's wrong with many of you. You don't know how to keep the space clear. You got a lover up there. You got a girlfriend up there. You got money up in there. Everything is there. But there is a place that only God belongs. Lord have mercy. I'm going to set him before me. Ah, I don't care what's going on. I don't care how busy. I don't care what's happening. It's never too busy for me to spend time with him. I need to spend time with him. Don't you interrupt that. Don't you get in there. Don't you expect to be God in my life. Don't you expect to satisfy the longing of my soul. You can be my friend and I need a friend. And I need help. And I need somebody to encourage me. But when it comes to Godship, he's the only God in my life. When it comes to correction he's got the power to change me when it comes to intimacy don't you try to get in there I don't two-time him because he doesn't two-time me come on put him back put him back bring him close bring him close tell your neighbor bring him close bring him close ah get closer 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 put your hands together for a closer <laughs> see that's what's wrong we didn't tell you to bring him closer every day. We told you, hold him, bring him closer when you come to these services. But as soon as you get out of here, closer in the lobby, closer on the elevator, closer in the hotel room, closer when you're eating your snack, closer when you're shopping, closer when you're under the hair dryer, when you get your weave, closer when you're buying clothes. Every time you move, there's a closer. So when, you know, what, what, that's too much. Well, that's what it takes. The devil is too much. Oh, come on. The souls in our lives are too much. Society is too much. The Supreme Court is too much. What you mean too much? Yeah, people out there who are planning against us, they are too much. So I got to get a whole lot to deal with the too much out there. Put your hands together for the closeness. I got to hold on to this tight. All right, so setting the Lord before me, said always, always, not behind me, 
not a sidekick not when I get in trouble not when I need money always so devotion what does that mean you get some devotional books utmost to the highest streams in the desert you get your Bible you get a pen and paper and you sit down and you hear what thus saith the Lord and you write it down then you get a Bible dictionary since you may not go to a church that believed in even doing Bible study and that's your problem but get a Bible get a Bible get a dictionary look it up look it up find out what it means find out what peace means what joy means find out what holiness means sit down with your word stop trying to look to somebody to always tell you you know how to eat eat this book turn off the tv and stop trying to look for a fix come on in and close the door shut the noise down turn off the television open up the bible the lord got something to say to your raggedy light put your hands together i want to hear you listen we're not just a people of emotions we're people of intelligence it's called intelligent worship it's called intelligent spirituality what is justification what is sanctification what does it mean to be adopted when you know stuff like that you can't be bought easily when you stand firm on your faith and you know in whom you believe and you're persuaded that he's able to keep that which you have committed unto him against that day ah winds may blow and storm may rise but you'll come back to the truth when you're rooted and grounded ah you're not easily influenced by every wind and doctrine you're not tossed to and fro you're not Buddhist Pentecostal you're not Hindu Baptist ah oh, you stand firm oh I know y'all don't like it now but I ain't scared of the devil the church has gone crazy but stand on what God said come on and put your hands together I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ it is the power of God unto salvation They promise you tranquility, but tranquility is not salvation. They promise you self-actualization, but self-actualization doesn't save your wretched soul. They promise you high self-esteem, but self-esteem does not promise you that you'll have everlasting life with God. You see, don't you touch that now, because you're coming back as a butterfly. The devil is a liar. You're going to stand before God just like you are. I don't care if you change your color, your sex, your mind, or whatever. When you stand before God, you're going to be just like he made you. Oh, I know y'all don't like that, but what can I tell you? Well, you better praise him right now. I said you better praise him right here. Keep him. Tell your neighbor, keep him right there. Keep him right there. He's Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Light of the tribe of Judah, Holy One of Israel, the only righteous God, the God that reigns, and he reigns forever. Keep him right there. Keep him in praise. Keep him in song. Keep him in the word. Keep him in obedience. Trust him. Obey him. Call on his name. Fast. Turn your plate down. Open up the book. Keep him right there. Listen. We're living in an age of attention deficit disorder in the church. We can't sit in church and hear a strong word. We start scratching our ears, digging our nose, chewing gum, and walking to the bathroom 50 times. Some of you are leaving now because you can't stand good word, strong word. As soon as the word comes forth, we get antsy. If it's promises for car and house, you're the first one running. But the moment the Lord start bringing that wild spirit in, that disobedient buck spirit in, we start getting angry. So now we're going to listen to somebody that makes you even wilder. You understand? But listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. If you're going to stand 20 years from now,
as a born again Bible believing Christian don't keep the denomination the personality the people keep Jesus in front of you and where do you find Jesus in the Bible you don't know what to keep in front of you if you don't read it you don't know who he is if you don't read about what he says about himself and stop looking to people to interpret it because they twist it to give you and make you a prisoner and make you a slave to their theology read it for yourself if you believe on me as the scripture had said out of your belly out of your belly out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water this make ye of the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on. You wouldn't be so easily bamboozled if you read it yourself. Tell your neighbor, keep it right there. Keep it right there. All right. What are the benefits? Two more points and I'm finished. What are the benefits of keeping him there? And what does that mean? That means I don't look to another source. I don't do astrology. Saints don't greet each other with praise the Lord anymore. When, when's your birthday? And, and, and you hurry up and give it. You ask them, why are you asking me about my birthday? Let me tell you about my spiritual birthday. I bet you there's no ast astrological sign for that. There's no astrological sign for my spiritual birthday. You understand? Ain't no Leo or Capricorn. My spiritual birthday is Holy Ghost. See? Right there. Because whether I'm Leo or Capricorn, he came to save me from my nature. To pull me away from what Leo tells me. Oh yes, whatever Sagittarius rule, when the Holy Ghost come, Holy Ghost overrules Sagittarius. Oh y'all don't want to hear me today. You pick up everything because you don't pick up the book. Your language is carnal because you don't read the Bible. You believe everything you hear because you don't know what you shouldn't hear. So keep him before you. Run after God. Get in somebody's Bible school. Take one little course. Jesus have mercy. Take one little course. Well, I don't know how to write paper. Don't write it, talk it. Whatever you do, just start learning. Grab it, eat it. Put it in your spirit. Why? When you keep him before you, you have security. Because he's at your right hand. You don't know who is at your right hand because you don't have him before you. The Bible said, David said, I'm able to stand this. I'm able to be in the midst of heathens and not be afraid. I'm confident because I'm not in the room by myself. When I stepped to this podium, I was not alone. I was not strapped either. I'm not strapped, but I got me an army. Yes, I do. When I walked in this room, I may look like I'm alone, but I have company. Who's with you? Ah, I got the king of kings. I say he's right here, right here. Oh, come on here. You walk around like you ain't got nobody beside you. When you walk in the room, the Lord is with you. He said, I am with you always, even to the end of the earth. He said, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is your King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle lift up your head come on you depressed people lift up your head oh he gates be lifted up in the lasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is your king of glory not Sagittarius not Leo not the government not the economy but the Lord of hosts the captain of the army of heaven ah he's got a whole army on my side Come on and help me praise him right here. Come on, put him there, put him there. Put him in your place. Put him in his place. Come on, lift him up. He belongs right there, right there, right there. Come on, take him from over here and put him right here. Get him from behind you, put him right. Come on, let me hear your praise.
my last point and I'm finished. He's before me. He's before me. I make no decisions without him. He's before me. Don't marry anybody without him. He's before me. Don't get in nothing without him. He's before me. Don't sign no paper without him. He's before me. Don't connect with the wrong person because he's before me. Lord, have mercy. I just want to add a little support text to the text. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. There was a king named Jehoshaphat. And the Bible said Jehoshaphat was a very powerful king of Judah. The Bible said that Jehoshaphat had a teaching revival. I started a teaching conference in New York just one night going to the boroughs and just teaching them sin because we don't like to talk about sin. You know, we don't talk about sin. If somebody call you a sinner, you get upset. But you see, that's how foolish you are because he died for sinners, you see. You should, you should be glad. Oh, are you a sinner? Yes. Why are you so happy? Because he died for me. <laughs> that ain't no insult. That's a compliment. He said, I didn't come to call the righteous. But I came to call raggedy, low down, no count, can't get it together, confused, cutthroat, backstabbing people. Lord, you ought to thank him right now, you see. I came for people who can't live holy. People who are raggedy and like being raggedy. That's who I died for. So he started a teaching revival. And his teaching revival, hear me, caused him to prosper. Because you can't teach the word of God and it doesn't bring economic stability but he got a little foolish he decided to hook up with Ahab and Ahab was king of Israel in Samaria and Ahab was a weak king who was married to a woman named Jezebel who was a high priestess to the other gods of Baal and Ashtaroth and she was a strong force she was in Jezebel because she wore red. She was in Jezebel because she wore red lipstick. She was Jezebel because she led people away from God. Did you hear what I'm saying? So when you lead people away from God, uh, you have a Jezebel intention. And 50 of the prophets had to hide from her. And, 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 the, and, and Jehoshaphat now got in an alliance, an unholy It's called unholy relationship. And he told Ahab, whatever you need, I have it. My army shall be your army. We'll fight together. And Ahab said, come on, let's go up to Ramoth Gilead and fight the enemy. And Jehoshaphat, and Je Jehoshaphat knew, I, I really know I made a mistake to get involved with you, but I'm too deep to come out. My, 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 my. I went in too deep and I can't come out so quickly. Oh, come on here. It's like shocking and, and owning property together. Oh, Lord, you all ain't going to help me right here. And now you know you got to move, but you got property tied up. How do I get out of this? So he said, call for the prophets. See, there were true prophets then. You know, we don't have too many true prophets now. We have mercenary and we have twilight prophets. But this was, this was a real prophet. And, 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 and Ahab hated him because he prophesied truth. And when you prophesy truth, they're going to hate you. But Jehoshaphat knew, I don't want to make a major decision without a word from the Lord. Uh, somebody in here getting ready to make a major decision. Hold it up, hold it up, hold it up. Tell your neighbor, hold it up, hold it up, hold it up. Before you get involved with that, hold it. Hold it, hold it. <laughs> Call for the prophet. And Ahab said, I don't like him. Because I don't like what he prophesied. And Micah came and Micah was scared. And so he started to prophesy what he thought the king would like. 
said, you know, you're going to go up to Ramoth Gilead and you're going to be successful. And Jehoshaphat had a spiritual ear. Tell your neighbor, turn up your ear, turn up your ear. You know that was a lie. You know that was a lie. When they laid hands on you and blew in your ear, you knew that was a lie. Ah, oh, Jehoshaphat said, no, I want to hear truth. Tell your neighbor, that's what I want. I got, I got to have truth. So don't come near me and speak anything that's not true. And, and my care, I said, when you go up there, you're going to die. Ah, uh, your blood gonna run down. Ah, uh, they gonna kill you and destroy you. And Ahab said, see what I mean? He never tells me anything that I need. Get rid of them. Take him out of here. You see, that's why we don't like to do the will of God. Because we have to pay the consequence. The Bible said that Jehoshaphat decided... To secure Ahab decided to secure himself. He told Jehoshaphat, "Why don't you just be me and I'll be you? <laughs> Let's switch up places." And these unholy alliances causes you to switch. <laughs> when you get in like that, you're switching. You lose your identity. You lose your purpose. You lose who you are. And the Bible said the arrow came. Tell your neighbor the arrow of God is coming. The arrow of God. And this arrow of God is getting ready to separate who is on his side and who is not. Oh, there's an arrow coming in the church now. There's an arrow that's been sent out by God. And there's going to be a split in the middle. Either you're with me or you're not with me. The arrow of God. The arrow came and should have been Jehoshaphat, but it went straight to the victim that deserved it. And Ahab was killed. And now God said to Jehoshaphat, why? You know, why did you get involved? But I saved you because there's something in you that I want. for something different Lord you all help me today I called you to do something outstanding and I'm not going to let anybody touch it ah you're too close to me Lord have mercy I brought you too close to lead you in the hands of cruel men come on and put your hands together and some of you God is getting ready to pull you back from your foolish commitment So, because he's before me, because he's protecting and defending me, that's the meaning of the right hand, protector and defender, keeping me from myself, keeping me from my foolish heart, my ignorant behavior, my weak areas. He's not only protecting me from the outside, protecting me from me. God. Hey, hey, hey. Somebody praise him now. Ah, oh, he's getting ready to keep you from your set. Shabbos. I said there's some of us that are prone to wander. We're prone to go in that direction. But the Lord is keeping you. Don't be mad because he locked that door. Don't be mad because he took that person out of your life. Don't get upset because things didn't go the way you want to. It was a blessing. Come on and thank him for the blessing. Keeping you, keeping you, keeping you, keeping you, keeping you. Dry your tears, dry your tears and thank him. I said, dry your tears and thank him. Fix your mouth and stop getting an attitude. He kept you from yourself. He kept you from falling in the same hole. He kept you from losing your mind. He kept you from another scandal. Come on, shama na 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 no so to go Somebody help me praise him. Somebody help me praise him. I feel God here now. Come on. Let me na 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 Shepherd. Shepherd of our souls. The bishop is in the house. Come on, and then they are to 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 to
Lord, I feel a drunkenness coming. No, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh. There's a covering on you now. Tell your neighbor, I'm covered, I'm covered, I'm covered. From the deceit of the enemy. From the secrecy of my wicked heart. From my prone to wonder. Oh, come on, all of us got a prone to wonder. He's able to keep me from falling. Now unto him, now unto him, now unto him who is able to keep me from falling and present me faultless. He's a keeper, he's a keeper. Come on and put your hands together for being a... Just snatch somebody. Well, y'all don't know Holy Ghost is in the house. Somebody was getting ready to get into something. And the Lord, in his will and mercy, the Lord is before me. He's at my right hand. He's before me. He's beside me. He's before me. He's beside me. I keep him before me, and he's beside me. Therefore, I shall not be moved. Listen to me. You can say that unabashedly. I don't care if you move from one city to the other. If you're in Christ and you keep him before you, there's a steadfastness. The ability to stand years later you're still standing the old saints got saved at 16 and were still saved at 90 the old preachers were saved at 20 and they went to heaven at 80 still saved never shifted from the gospel didn't have the Hebrew or Greek but had an undaunted commitment stood the test of time winds blew storms rose but they rose up saying i believe in god what's happening to the church today we've got people before us we've got opinions before us we've got worldly ideas before us as long as you keep them there you will not stand but if you hold jesus right there if you hold the word of god if the word of god is preeminent in your life if you memorize it and obey it you will stand 20 years from now your children will be in church your grandchildren will be in church the generation of god will go on forever come on church put him in his place take everything out of the space pull jesus in pull his word in memorize his scripture obey his word not by feeling but by the word of god not by emotions but by the word of god some trust in horses some trust in chariots but i will remember the name of the lord name of the lord is a strong tower righteous running therein and his same i feel a crazy praise now come on and give him a crazy praise i talking about no bmw praise i ain't talking about no mercedes praise i'm talking about word of god praise let the redeemer of the lord say so let the redeemer of the lord say so let the redeemer of the lord did I just teach you it's called the doctrine of perseverance of the saints it is a definite doctrine of the Bible perseverance of the saints is a theological concept that says 
The race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. I ain't impressed with how you holler, but it's for those who endure. Thank <laughs> hey God you help me right now. For those who take a licking and keep on ticking. For those who claim Christ today and will claim Christ next year and will claim Christ 10 years from now. For those who believe in holiness and don't compromise holiness. The Lord said that's a definite work of grace. And where is grace? In you. And where do you learn it? In the word. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to stand. Tell you never you're going to stand. I'm going to see you next year. I'm going to see you 10 years from now. And when you see me, I won't be changing my doctrine. And when you see me, I won't have another theology. And when you see me, it's going to be the same testimony. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Come on and let me hear your praising. Put your hands together. I want to hear your Hold your neighbor's hand. There is a remnant that's going to stand. Tell your neighbor there's a remnant. I don't know where you belong. Christians are being persecuted right now in other countries. In the South, churches are being bombed. Pastors are being killed. It's not in the Middle East, it's right here. And many of you feeling your religion and not knowing your God will run under pressure. Yes, you will. You can't do this without knowing. You can't do this without having him close. You'll give up. That's how the flesh functions. Flesh doesn't want to be hurt. Flesh doesn't want to die. Flesh likes food and comfort. So if you don't have him like that, you hear what I'm saying? Like that. Have him so saturated. Under pressure. You'll choose comfort. But there's a remnant. There's a remnant. You can't buy me. You can't seduce me. I've been hungry too long. I know what it is to eat an egg in the morning and drink water. So food can't seduce me. Clothes, I've walked with holes in my shoes. I've even walked barefooted. So if you take my shoes, I know how to walk barefooted. God help me, but I'm so be a tabochkete. I've lived in small apartments. So big houses, you can't seduce me with that. I know how to catch the bus. <laughs> hey, so if you take the car, I know where the bus stop is. Oh, come on, and the so much I take. Come on, and the shepherd of a man. See, I've been talked about so much that being talked about can't break me. May make me feel a little sad, but you ain't gonna break me. And a little honor don't mean a thing because you honor me in the front and stab me in the back. So I ain't worried about your honor, baby. The Lord said, if you honor me, I'll honor you. That's the honor I'm talking about. So what can you take from me? Come on. Lost everything. Lost child, lost marriage, lost friends. So when you lose like that, you gain. What do you gain? Him. Jesus. And when you have him, there's a certain attitude. Tell your neighbor, I got a certain attitude here. It's not cocky. It's steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding 
Uh, tell your neighbor, steadfast, steadfast. Uh, come on, look them in the eye and say, be steadfast. I command you to be steadfast. Be unmovable. Send them on under. It means don't slip and slide. Uh, tell your neighbor, stop the slipping and sliding. Come on, I rebuke the spirit of slipping and sliding. I rebuke the spirit of slipping and sliding. You slipping and sliding demon. One month in church and another one month missing. One day you're up and another day you're down. One day you're gloving God and another day you don't want if you want to go with God. I'm speaking to your spirit right now. Be steadfast under pressure. Steadfast when the door is slammed in your face. Steadfast when you don't see your way. Un Movable. I ain't moving. I know it's not going well, but I ain't moving. I don't know what's getting ready to happen, but I ain't moving. Always abounding. Always teaching. Always preaching. Come on, McCullough. Pick up your Bible, girl. They don't know you're going through. Always abounding. Oh, God. I want you to praise him right now. There's a spirit of steadfastness coming upon you. I said, there's a spirit of steadfastness. I said, there's a spirit of steadfastness coming upon you. Come on, the answer. Maybe another month so to us. Come on, 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 Jesus, the Lord has been leading me to reach out to the generation of 17 to 34, the millennials. You're next in line. This is a generational Christianity. Church will never die. I don't care how many people leave, church will never die. So, consolidate, consolidate, consolidate. Get them together, get them together. If you're 17 and 34 and you want to be in church for the next 30, 40, 50 years, and you want to stand, you have a lot of distraction, you have technology, you have music, you have politics, you have social mores and values. There's so much to pull you away. You got fashion. Anything they tell you to put on, you put it on, and you know you don't look right. I'm not supposed to see the crease of your butt in worship. I'm not supposed to see it. I'm not supposed, so I'm not supposed to see these girls. These girls, they're not supposed to be in my face when you raise your hand. But you let the world tell you to do that. Go put some clothes on. Put some clothes on. Them tight things are not, they're underwears. They're not overwears. I don't care how comfortable they are. Put clothes on. Dress for your purpose. Tell your neighbor, dress for your purpose. Yay! I know you don't like me, but I feel a hollering right here. Dress. Men can't hardly praise God because it's too tight. And brothers, I'm not supposed to see your, par your parts. I'm not supposed to know the shape of them. Cover it. It's an offense to God. When Jay-Z and P. Diddy go to a business meeting, they're dressed in a suit. They don't look like gangster rap. They go for business. Well, dress for business for the king. Dress so you can lay hands on the sick and I won't be embarrassed. Dress so you can chase demons. Come on, summer. Hey. Seventeen to thirty-four. Seventeen to thirty-four. Seventeen to thirty-four. You're too slow. Come on, all the way up. I want to release something on you. 
You're going to be intelligent worshipers. Thank you. You're going to be demon chasers. Thank you. You're going to hold up the word of God. Thank you. You're going to articulate your faith. Thank you. You understand? You're going to defend the faith. Thank you. You're going to become apologetics. Thank you. You're going to walk in the anointing. Thank you. You're going to stand firm in your faith. Thank you. You're not going to be so easily seduced by new age phenomenon. Thank you. The word of God is going to be quick and sharp in your mouth. Thank you. You're going to be midwives. You're going to travail. You're going to know how to travail in prayer. Thank you. You're going to know how to raise your hand and worship without entertainment. Thank you. You're going to walk closely with the Lord. He's going to speak to you. You're going to go to foreign countries. Ah, you're going to be trained in several languages so you could reach the world. Lord have mercy. You're going to use your Facebook to testify. Instead of talking about what color weave you got, you're going to talk about what Jesus did to your black heart and gave you a new heart. Come on, you raise your hands. The devil is a liar. You're not everybody's in the club. There's some of you that will walk with God in spite of your struggles. I said in spite of your struggles. Hey, in spite of your weaknesses. Your teachers. Your teachers. Study. Spend your money on books. If you don't like books, get Bible software. Learn how to look up a word, learn how to memorize it. Learn how to cross-reference. Learn how to rehearse scripture. Learn how to obey God spontaneously. He's gonna tell you to do some crazy things. Like walk around your bedroom and clap. Just clap. Learn how to flow in the Holy Ghost. Learn how to speak a word to somebody who is weary. You don't have to walk around with a big t-shirt. Learn to follow God. God said, go over there and talk to that person about hope and tell them, you're getting ready to commit suicide when I come out hope in your life. Learn to flow. I release you from church in this. I release you from knowing how to dance in church and knowing how to do all of that, but don't know how to walk in Jesus. Come on, raise those hands and let me hear your praising for the autumn. Come on, on, te, 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 te. come on, na, 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 na,